Here we have two capacitors C1 and C2 connected to a battery with voltage V. We say that these two capacitors are connected in parallel. When two components are connected in parallel, they have both ends connected together, this end together and that end also together. In fact, in this particular case, these two capacitors and the battery are all connected in parallel. They all have one end together and the other end is also together. Let's find the equivalent capacitance for these two capacitors in parallel. Suppose this circuit with a single capacitor that has a capacitance equivalent to those two in parallel is connected to an identical battery. Then if this battery pumps a positive Q out this way and a negative Q out this way, then this other battery would do the same thing. Positive Q here and the negative Q here. When this positive Q gets here, it splits into Q1 and the Q2. This means that when two capacitors are in parallel, they end up sharing the charge pumped by the battery. So Q equals to Q1 plus Q2. And the two capacitors in parallel have the same voltage. If components are connected in parallel, the voltage or potential difference would be the same for every component that is in parallel. Since Q equals to CV, this Q would equal to the equivalent C times V. And the Q1 would equal to C1 times V. And Q2 is C2 times V. Because they all have the same voltage, the Vs can cancel. And that gives us this equation for finding the equivalent capacitance when we have capacitors in parallel. If we have more than two capacitors, we can just keep adding the capacitance. This means that the more the capacitors we have in parallel, the larger the equivalent capacitance. When we connect capacitors in parallel, it is kind of like making the plate area bigger. The larger the A, the larger the capacitance. So the more capacitors we connect in parallel, the larger the equivalent capacitance.